Okay, here is your Unit 5 exam review. I've already tried to record it once, but something got screwed up. So that's why the notes are already done, because I've already done this one time tonight, and now I'm trying again. But anyway, uh, the exam uh, deals with three major groups of ideas. And the first major idea is two-dimensional force, 2D force. That is, we have a force like this that can be broken up into its X and Y components. And so, first you have to identify what the X and Y directions are, and then you'll have some kind of angle within that XY axis system, and you make the adjacent component of the force F cosine theta and the opposite component F sine theta. And quite often um, the F sine theta is in the y direction and F cosine theta is in the x direction, but of course on inclined plane problems those get reversed. So the way to remember what's cosine and what's sine is by looking at the triangle. If you have a force and you're breaking it up into components, then the component that's adjacent to the angle you're using, you use cosine. Opposite, you use sine. Now one of the types of problems we're going to do is going to be the hanging sine problem. So here we have a, a, a sine or something like some kind of mass that's hanging down and gravity's trying to pull it down, but we're holding it up with two cables like this. And uh, these cables might be at different angles, or they might be at the same angle. But uh, what you need to do is take these forces and break them up into their x and y components. So this would be f1 cosine theta. This would be f1 sine theta, because it's the opposite from the angle. This might be a different angle, but here's f2 cosine theta and f2 sine theta. And then, of course, we have gravity pulling it straight down. And so I chose to make you know x and y axis look like this. And then what you would do to solve this problem is you would just sum the forces in the x direction equals ma in the x direction. But if it's a hanging sign problem, the sign is not going to accelerate. So this is, this is always going to be 0. And then you just look at the free body diagram. Ah, here we have f1 in the x minus F2 in the X equals 0. So that's going to give you a relationship between F1 and F2, at least in the X direction. And then you look at it in the Y direction. Uh, again, the acceleration in the Y direction will be 0, but in the Y direction we have F1 in the Y plus F2 in the Y minus mg equals 0. And then you would just use these two equations to solve the problem. After that, it's just kind of Algebra 1. You might have to make a substitution or something like that. Or maybe not, if it's a simpler problem. But uh, that's the basic idea uh, for a hanging sign problem. The other kind of problem you're going to work is a, an inclined plane problem. So here we have an incline. Here's the horizontal. Up angle theta. Maybe we've got friction here. We have a mass. Maybe we're pulling this thing up the incline. Uh, maybe there's maybe there's velocity going up. Uh, maybe it's moving up. Maybe it's accelerating. Maybe it's slowing down. I don't know. Depends on the problem. Well, you take this mass and you draw the free body diagram, which I've done here. So gravity pulls it straight down. Your applied force, force of friction, normal force. Be very careful about applied forces. Sometimes there are applied forces, sometimes there aren't. An applied force is like someone's pulling on it with a rope or somebody's pushing on it or something like that. If nobody's pushing on or pulling on it, if there's no outside agent that's, you know, like somebody physically applying a force to this crate, then there might not be an applied force. So be careful of that. Um, if it's moving up the incline, the force of friction would be down like that. And uh, since most, like the friction, the applied, the normal force, 
line up like this, it makes the most sense to make your x and y axis line up with them. So tilt your x, y axis. That will force you to take your weight, mg, and break it up into a component that's normal to the surface and parallel to the surface, to the incline. And if you incline this up by an angle theta, then this will get rotated by the same angle. And here's your adjacent component. So you use mg as the force times the cosine of the angle. mg sine theta is parallel to the incline. And then you <coughs> sum the forces in the x direction equals ma in the x. And then you look at the free body diagram. Applied force is pulling it up. Friction force is pulling you down. Uh, mg is pulling you down. This mg sine theta. The comp that's the component of the weight that's trying to pull you down the incline. And this gives you an equation that you can work with. Maybe there's mass. It, remember, constant velocity means the acceleration is zero. So this, this term might be zero, depending on the problem. When you sum the forces in the y direction, you say, oh, in the y direction there's only two forces. The normal force and then this component of your weight. And that just means that the normal force will be equal to the weight times the cosine of the angle of incline. And of course, you'll use this if you need to solve for the force of friction in terms of mu. And of course, remember, the force of gravity is the mass times the gravitational field, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And then you just have to solve these equations for whatever unknown there is using this and you'll get the answer. But be very careful. Maybe the crate is moving down the incline, in which case friction would be in the opposite direction. Um, and maybe there, maybe it's moving with constant velocity. Maybe it's accelerating down the incline. It depends on the problem. So um, there's a, a wide variety of, uh, of incline plane problems I could give you. There is an incline plane. There is a hanging mass problem on the test. Okay, and there is an inclined plane problem on the test. Okay, the next type of problem on the test is projectile motion. And what projectile motion means is you have an object that's been thrown but is only under the influence of gravity. That is the acceleration will be the acceleration of gravity straight down negative 9.8 meters per second squared in uh, the downward, you know, well, downward, that's what the negative means. And we're going to make, uh, you know, our axis system is to make x to the right and y is up um, for projectile motions. And that's the only force acting. So the first kind of projectile motion problem I can give you is a cliff problem where I throw an object horizontally with some initial velocity and it it goes all the way down to the bottom. Um, now maybe I'll give you a delta y. In this case I give an example of 50 meters. Remember that it falls down. So delta y is negative. Okay, The acceleration is negative downwards. Okay. And there are kinematic equations to use in projectile motion. Um, since the only force acting on a projectile is the force of gravity, and gravity only acts in the y direction, there is no acceleration in the x direction. So the only kinematic equation in the x direction is delta x equals v naught x times t. And that the velocity in the x direction is constant. Vx equals a constant in projectile motion. The horizontal velocity is constant. Um, in the y direction, however, we use these kinematic equations mainly. And um, um, so, and, and, and notice that in, in, a, in a cliff problem, when we throw it horizontally, the initial velocity in the y direction is going to be zero. And so you can use this 
right? V naught is zero, so these terms would go away if you were using that, you know, any of these three equations. Delta Y, this has delta Y in it. You can use this one. Um, or this one has delta Y in it. You can use this one if you're solving for time. So you'll use these equations in the Y direction. Remember that time, if you solve for time in one of these two equations, uh, <clears throat> as the projectile moves down, it's also moving across, but at the same time. So time is the link between these two, uh, bet or, you know, between the y direction and the x direction. So you can use that. So you will solve a cliff problem like this. I might ask you to find the final velocity. Remember, here's the final velocity. Here it is. And, and the final velocity is just before it hits the ground. Of course, when it hits the ground, the velocity is zero uh, after it hits the ground. Who cares? I want to know the velocity just before it hits the ground. And so you got this big downward velocity. But it also carries with it that horizontal. This is equal to this. And then this is equal to whatever you get using either this equation or this equation. And then you can use Pythagorean theorem to get the overall final velocity and the downward angle like that. The other kind of projectile motion problem you're going to get on a test is the football problem, where you, you might kick a ball and it's launched into the air. Now remember, we don't care what happened as the ball was kicked. Of course, you know, the, 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 the foot's going to kick it and it's going to take off, but once it leaves your foot or leaves the air, like it might be an arrow that you're shooting with a bow and arrow, or may, might be a ball that you're throwing with your arm. In a projectile motion problem, we're only looking at the object after it's left your foot or after it's left the bow or left your arm. You're not touching it anymore. The only force acting on it is the force of gravity pulling it down. So that's, that's important to keep in mind. So here it goes, it goes up, comes back down like this. Here's your delta x, so you can use that delta x equals v naught cosine theta times t. Oh, here's the thing. If I give you a problem where the initial velocity is at some angle like this, just like with a force, you can break a velocity vector into its components. So this is the adjacent component, so it's going to be v naught times the cosine of the angle. Here's the opposite component, v naught sine theta. This, of course, is equal to v naught y, and this, of course, is equal to v naught x. And it's going to go up and come down. Now, remember, at the very top, its velocity in the x doesn't change. v in the x equals a constant, and that will equal v naught x, which is v naught cosine theta. Okay. It stays the same everywhere in the flight, but at the very top, look, the ball's going to go up and it's going to come down. So at the top, if you're just looking at the y component of the velocity, if it goes up and then comes down at the very top, the velocity is zero. And you can use that to figure out what delta y is. If you know that uh, v naught uh, or vy is, z is zero at the top, you can use the this this kinematic equation here say, oh, this is zero, and I know this is just v naught sine theta, quantity squared, plus 2a delta y. You can solve for delta y. That is the maximum height the ball reaches. Or, if I want to know how far it goes, look, if it goes up and comes down, it hasn't changed height at all. So when it's right here, delta y equals zero. And I can use that with this equation right here, okay, to figure out how much time the ball was in the air. And uh, this is 0 equals v naught y times t plus 1 half at squared. Divide both sides by t and then solve for the t that's remaining and you'll get it. Or if you like you can use this equation, it's a little bit easier to figure out how much time it takes to go up. But this will, if you use this equation to solve for time, you're only going to get half the time because it also needs to come back down and the time it takes to go up is equal to the amount of time it takes to go down as long as you end at the same height that you were launched from. Okay? And then once you solve for time, you can use it with this equation to figure out how far you go. Okay? So that's what's going on 
with projectile motion. You have two problems. The cliff problem, where really your the cliff problem is almost like this, where you know you you launch and you you go down like this. Or here we start, we launch, we kick off, and uh, and so on. So I think um, uh, there's going to be a problem like this on the test. The last kind of concept, the last problem on the test, is for uniform circular motion. So imagine here's a hockey puck and it's moving with some velocity okay now if the hockey puck has this velocity and you're not touching it just you know the, the gravity's pulling it down and the ice is holding it up but let's say ice is almost no friction so this hockey puck's just going to move off in a straight line isn't it but what if you tied a string to it well the string is going to pull on it towards the center of the circle that string will make the hockey puck go in a circle but the strings not going to slow the hockey puck down or speed it up it's only going to change the direction of it now that takes an acceleration we call the acceleration that changes the direction of your velocity that is that makes your velocity go around in a circle we call that kind of acceleration centripetal acceleration and that's the kind of acceleration you feel when you're driving a car and you make a turn and you feel like you're getting pushed off to the side well what's really happening is that there is a force pushing you towards the center of the circle that you're driving around and the magnitude of that acceleration is v squared over r and uh, I'm not going to rederive it here uh, we, uh, there is a video where I derive this equation using similar triangles and so on. Go back and re-watch re that video if you want to. And of course, centripetal acceleration means that you need a centripetal force to make it. So the force that makes objects move in circles is called centripetal force, and it's equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration, or mv squared over r. And there's the equation for that. There are two kinds of uniform circular motion problems that, that, that could put be on the test. One is very simple. What if I put a mass on a string and just whirl it around in a horizontal circle? Well, that tension force is, these, is the net force acting on it. Let's ignore gravity. And that's going to be equal to mv squared over r. And remember that if something's moving in a circle, its velocity is equal to 2 pi r over the period. This, this capital T here represents the period or the time to go around once. Okay, and you can substitute this into there and derive another equation. Another kind of problem I can, I'm, I'm going to give you on the test is a car going around in a circle like this in a, in a, like a driveway or, or I mean in a, in a parking lot or something. You're just making a circle and it's a flat, it's a flat plane and you're just going around in a circle. Well, if you draw a free body diagram of the car, gravity is pulling you down. The road, the surface of the road is pushing up on you with a normal force. But it's the static friction between your wheels and the road that makes you go in a circle. And so notice that this, well, these two forces cancel each other out. There is no acceleration in the y direction. But in the x direction, the horizontal direction, there is a net force, and that net force is a centripetal force. The force of friction is equal to mv squared over r. But remember, the force of friction is also equal to mu times the normal force. Well, what's the normal force? Well, the normal force is supporting your weight. So the normal force is just equal to mg. So I can say, ah, the force of friction is equal to mu mg, but it's also equal to mv squared over r. So I can equate this to this. Notice that the mass cancels out. That's why I don't have to give you the mass of the car, because it's going to cancel out. And now you can solve for mu, or you can solve for v, or you can solve for r, depending on what I give you. Okay. Now make sure on the test that you draw the free body diagram and really go through it in detail. Don't just write this down and plug and chug into equations. Show me the physics. Okay, and you will do okay. Okay, hold on a second. I'm not going to stop the video.
I just hung up on them. It was a sales call or something. Somebody wanted money. Um, so, uh, now, so these are the things, these are the kind of problems that are on the test. Let's go through it again. 2D force, a couple problems like that. Uh, projectile motion, a cliff problem, or maybe a um, football kickoff problem. And then finally, uniform circular motion problem like this. And I think you can get all the equations you need from this paper, um, and uh, and you got it. Now there there now here's the test. Okay, the test is ten multiple choice questions. So you are going to need to understand the concepts. The multiple choice questions are conceptual. Make sure you know, you know what a resultant force is, what an equilibrant force is. Look that up. Make sure you understand the angle of incline and how that breaks x and y. Uh, how the the force of gravity gets broken up into its uh, normal and perpendicular components to the plane. Um, and uh, that, that centripetal acceleration doesn't change your speed, it only changes the direction of your velocity vector, uh, and so on. Make sure you, you know, centripetal, make sure you know what that means, centripetal force, centripetal acceleration. Make sure you know that in a projectile motion, the force is the, I mean, gravity is the only force acting. Uh, that sort of thing. So I, th I think this has been a, a pretty decent review. Um, I wish you the best of luck tomorrow. I hope you all get A's on this test. But if you don't, just do your, do your best and keep working at it. And uh, when this is over, uh, Christmas right around the corner. Uh, winter break. It's coming. That is all.